You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. It's one thing I can't stand is sports friends from the American Northeast. It's only I, one thing. I said it. <laughs> That's one thing I can't stand is sports fans from the American Basically, if you're from, from the Boston, Northeast, for, if you're from Boston, I don't like Patriots fans. I don't like people who like Tom Brady as a general rule. That's like a good axiom for me. If I got if I got to get to know someone and you're a big Tom Brady fan, historically speaking, meh. So you wouldn't call him the GOAT? Uh, no, there's a difference between liking someone and recognizing that they're the greatest of all time. The guy does have more Lombardis than like however many franchises combined. So we're talking specifically personality per- The personality of someone who has a Tom Brady – none of my friends own Tom Brady jersey. And that's like a hard rule. It's <laughs> like – you know, that's like on par with neon clothing. I feel like if you own a Tom Brady t-shirt, you go to a store specifically to buy matching workout clothes. Like you have some sort of sweat cool Adidas technology bullshit cut off thing with the matching neon laces in your fucking <laughs> shoes. You know what I mean? You're a, you're a grass stained New Balance dad. That's what you are. All right. I just, I can't, again, stay in your lane. And this is where Tom Brady's got to like the TB12 thing. I think there's a certain level of value in professional athletes having their guy. I'm obviously biased in saying that because I'm the guy for a handful of professional athletes. But to utilize your God-given talent on this earth to deceit and bend the principles of science that me and you have gone through rigorous amounts of schooling and own personal experience to derive these first principles from, I think is manipulative. It's dishonest. Tom, throw the fucking ball. Wear your Uggs. Eat your avocado ice cream if you want. Have pillow fights with Gronk. I don't give a fuck what you do. Do not enter into the realm of rehabilitation. Egregious overstep. Thoughts? He uses the word pliability. Don't know what that means. It means I and can bend you, right? Capital letters body coach Ugh. are things that you know. Just from briefly, I know scanning. some strippers that call themselves body, body coaches. Body coach, hundred percent. I feel like a stripper should have a body Coco coach. Coco and Jasmine on OnlyFans, guaranteed <laughs> body coach. If I have, I'm hiring a trainer or a co- like a strength coach as a professional athlete. Right. I better see some fucking credentials. I want to see malpractice insurance. I want to see state ethics and licensure. I do not want to see a $350 ice foam roller. Yeah. I I just don't, I don't understand how the public does not see through this facade. So I don't think a lot of people think of it logically, right? They think of it through the realm of this guy, he's the greatest. He has all this experience. I want to do what he does and it's going to work the same way for me. Right, I think I think that's the train of thought that a lot of people have, but myself and yourself working with a lot of very gifted athletes, I think there's a big kind of dissonance between ability and the understanding of that ability. I don't think anyone like most people's desired outcome. I would imagine is not to throw for a record number of yards, right? I don't think many people who embark on TB12 or some sort of weekend warrior trying to make it to the league football player. So I don't understand why adopting the training, while we're on the topic, Chris Hemsworth, why is this a thing? Have you looked into his app? No. That would be something worth pulling up while I rant about it. All right, you go ahead, I'll go ahead. Just as like Tom Brady is not an authority on anything other than dating outside of his league and eating avocado ice cream, it's like why is Chris Hemsworth now an authority in fitness? He's in moderately okay shape for a guy his age. Incredibly like, handsome, though. What's that? Incredibly handsome. But like, here's the thing: Do you think working out's going to make you more handsome? 
I've you always think, hoped that it would. But do you think working out's going to get you into the league and allow you to win seven fucking Lombardies? I just, I fundamentally cannot see, and maybe I'm so dissonant that when I enter into fields and I'm a consumer in other subdomains that aren't fitness, that I'm not as well versed in, that I'm falling right into these stupid traps blindly when I go purchase a vehicle or when I go buy shoes or whatever, things I don't really know much about, but I'm like, oh, like those seem cool. I'm going to go with that. Right. But it's like, I like to think I'm so jaded that when I see the word pliability and I hear someone talk about becoming a certified body coach, it's like, what are you, the assistant to the traveling secretary? No more useless job title exists on this planet than body coach. Yeah. What does that even mean? It's It sounds like it's someone who's being sold a system, right? right? This is Tom Brady's system. This is what he does. This is his brand. And it's like catching flies on one of those like little rolls of sticky tape right <laughs> go i don't know no i know not right go explain Tom that. brady is this sticky tape right and it attracts these people that are going to be attracted regardless and they're not necessarily there for the results they're there for the tom brady okay right so they're getting suckered in to to tom brady and this is his thing and i support tom brady so i'm going to do tom brady's thing so I'm going to do TB12, I'm going to get a body coach, and I'm going to be so damn pliable. Dude, he is the Ned Flanders of pro athletes. <laughs> Yet he dropped an – I bring this up every time he comes up. Does no one remember when he dropped the end bomb? Like that never happened? Dude, it's so funny how people can be like – like The Rock takes a ton of gear. A-Rod gets in shit for running gear and hitting, hitting dingers. The Rock was a viable candidate for president and has banged more cycles of steroids than anyone in Major League Baseball ever. He buys his mom an Escalade and eats a bunch of cookies on Instagram. All of a sudden, he's indemnified. Tom Brady, like, just, I don't know, what does he do? No one really knows. He kind of sits late in the background. He's not very much a public figure outside of playing football. Drops the N-bomb. Everyone's like, oh, it was with an A. It was with an A. It didn't matter. It's like, that's not a rule book. I I guarantee you, if me and you came over the center of the plate hot with that, it's like, well, there goes RX Radio. But I just just don't understand, like, buying some, like, buying a vehicle to someone. And, like, you're actually buying this vehicle. Like, you're using fitness, but it's Tom Brady. Right? Like, I just don't, I don't get the link between that. Like, I don't understand why people would do that. And not even to get into... Do you think Tom Brady actually does this shit? Let's start there. <laughs> I highly doubt it's the same stuff that he does. Or maybe it is. I don't know. How many days, like, and it's probably not often with you, but, like, where you've programmed for your athletes and thought, yeah, no. <laughs> right? Like, you're trying, but every day, like, I like to think of this. You know Jocko Willink? Yeah, yeah. I like to think Jocko does, like, a Timex photo shoot. Where he just sits there on like a Monday, I got to create content for the week. And Jocko just sits there with his Timex and just takes a bunch of different pictures and has some kid, some Filipino VA posting up at 4.30 in the morning. I would love the idea of Jocko crawling out of bed, putting on like a Versace house coat at like 9.30, stretching out in his mansion, like getting a cup of coffee and just like answering back to all the comments of him supposedly awake at 4.30. Because you know what, man? At the end of the day, he's a human being. And I think people ascend guys like Brady, guys like this Hemsworth dude, guys like Jocko to this deity-like status because they don't have a deity to follow. It's like, all right, well, if I aim at something that I think is perfect, I'm going to fall short, but I'll be better than if I didn't have this thing. So I don't think people could can handle – like when Brady dropped the end bomb, I don't think people's hearts could take that. Because you can't cancel Brady. He's the closest thing to Jesus that America has now. <laughs> Literally. Like that final play, he could have just been walking on water and turning it into wine at the same time. <laughs> oh. But it's like it's crazy to me that we, we nominate these people and ascend them to this. It's like you get a certain level of status and cachet. You're kind of good at one thing and all of a sudden you're just omnipotent and omnipresent everywhere. Like Brady could release – like. He sells, like, alpaca shoes or whatever the fuck. Like, he's as as qualified to sell body coaching as he is to sell Ugg shoes. <laughs> but it's like credentialing means nothing. It's just – it's such a cult of personality. And it's just, I don't understand what the motivation is that leads someone to purchase a product like a fitness system sold by a guy 
who's kind of got like a dad bod, but his wife is super hot and makes more money than him. Like, oh, yeah, like that's how it's going to work. I'm going to be pliable, <laughs> and then it's going to be nothing but runway models. I mean, it doesn't sound much different to me than George Foreman selling like panini presses. <laughs> yeah, but like what is – like what is – there's something, there's there's something in the sauce there, like right. Do you, and do you not think it's just about money? He has a brand. He has a name. He has reach. Sell boxing gloves, <laughs> right? But wouldn't that make more sense? It would. But how many people eat paninis and how many people box? Yeah, I, but here's my my thought process is okay. I can't comfortably – look, the reason – panini seemed like a great idea at a lunch somewhere. I've never ordered a panini because I can't possibly put those syllables – I can't look another <laughs> man in the eye and be like, I'll have a panini. Even doing that to you, you're one of my closest <laughs> friends on the planet. I felt some kind of way about that. Uh, like I just couldn't do it. I just I'm don't – hungry. I, like, is there market research that goes into this? Like, all right, Brady, let's monetize you as a human being. Well, as I'm kind of into this and whatever, yeah. But what about what about ice foam rollers and alpaca shoes? We've been running the numbers, and we really think that this is going to be the avenue. And they go great. Like, is it a calculated decision to go with these opportunities? Like, is there an agency that goes, all right, we've we've analyzed your demographic, you know, we see a hole in a market, maybe we could fill it with like this angle. This is how you the public perceives you. We've done a lot of focus groups on the issue. Or is Brady going, no, 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 we're going to do this. Like, I can't imagine Brady's putting this thing together. No, I'd imagine that there's just like stacks of paper that come across his desk. He signs off on it, and then someone else does all this shit with his name on it. That's kind of my picture at how this whole thing was formed and how it happened. I don't know. I just – at what point do you see it as selling out? Uh, Almost immediately. Did did Foreman sell out? So it's hard to say because it's so easy for anyone to start a company company like that sure. nowadays, right? So and no one no one actually has to be qualified to sell foam rollers and to to body. Who's the governing body for body coaching? Yeah, no, I don't uh, know. The is there Mexican a board drug for that? cartel? Maybe. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so it's he's possibly making up this category so that he can sign off on it and right. and have this kind of. This group that is governed by him and and his, you know, team of people who oversees it, and they're the ones that are kind of designing the brand around it, right? Right? Because he's what he's got to be one of the older players on the football field, 43. right? And he's still winning rings. I think that's like the I think that's the selling point, right? It's not necessarily this is going to get you in the best shape of your life. This is going to play. Exactly. It's longevity and longevity is a different market than a kid trying to go to the league or someone trying to, you know, squat as much weight as they can or whatever that other strength goal might be. So you're assuming that there was a conversation had, all right, let's do something in fitness, but maybe let's capitalize on the fact that you're an older athlete in the league and that you could probably tap into like a baby boomer market that doesn't want to like, what's his Harrison? Who's the guy who breaks his spine doing fucking sled pushes? Is it James Harrison? I have no idea. He used to play for the Steelers. He pushed like a thousand pounds sled. Like awful. Like the worst technique. I'd never tell him that because he ripped me limb from limb. But it's like you don't want that Clay Matthews training program coming into a big like like blue water market like that. Right. You don't want the front double bicep fucking 20 inch arm game if you're trying to reach a mass market do you think at a point there was a conversation like oh brady's like okay yeah i like training i've obviously been working out for a while you know maybe i want it to be more performance based and someone was like tom have you thought about you know you're getting a little older man like have you thought maybe we go into this much larger market that's unexposed from any sort of professional athlete yeah i mean the more i think about the more i wish i was in this meeting but i feel like it was just Think about watching the Super Bowl. How many times do you think they mentioned his age? Oh, dude, it was like it was the focal point. It was how, how many people around that age you think were watching the Super Bowl from their couch? Tens, if not hundreds of millions. Uh, at that age, probably tens of millions of people in that age demographic. Right. So it's almost like a self-selected demographic at that point, right? right. It's like who are you going to sell to? You're not going to sell, you know, this this program to this kid in high school that's. <laughs> You know, just starting out his career, he's not going to do the same thing as the, right. was he 46 years old? 43. 43? This 43? 
Yeah, I fact think check. Yeah, fact you guys check. are fact check. I love having. Can, can video. we get that, dude? Lund- yeah, Lundy does it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It's like bring up like young Jamie's in the in the house. Yeah. So forty three. Yeah, they mentioned that in between every fucking play. Exactly. So it's almost like okay, you have this. Right. This is your thing. You're the old guy that keeps winning rings. Right. Let's be the old guy that keeps winning rings. Sure. And market to old guys that want to look up to the guy that keeps winning rings. And the thing too, the the beauty of and the I, I don't know how well the business does. I'm assuming just sh- by sheer volume of like organic reach, it right. does okay, right? Like their overheads probably the stuff shipped out of China. I don't know. Who, you'd be interesting is to like do one of these on a podcast. <laughs> Like have a coaching call and just come in and pretend like we don't know anything, and just dude, let's like an expose. Yo, that's a whole new RX Radio thing. Oh we could just God. be investigative journalist trolls. We could be like the John Oliver, like when he like made himself like he made the the Daily Show or whatever a, a Catholic church or like a church, and he like went through and did all the legal paperwork to make his show actually or an organized religion. Oh dude, God, I would love dude. to do that on the show and just be like, oh, really? Tell me what pliability is and just record it and put it up as a podcast. That would be pretty hilarious. Well, I just think to me like the genius move is, yeah, you want to sell to your market, but it helps when your market has money, mm-hmm. right? And that's the that's the beauty of that pitch is like, yeah, the thing with 43-year-old people is by 43, most of them kind of got it figured out, at least more so than a 20-year-old, right? right? So it's like there's so many – things that overlap for that to be good but at some point it's it's so non-specific that it's unappealing mm-hmm. right like there was a time early where people were telling me that look hyper specificity is not a good move in business but i think now with the way technology is and the way people like minds can find each other and the way targeted ads can find like minds that hyper specificity is a win right so tom to me with tb12 seems to be painting such a broad brush that he might not actually be reaching as many people and when i say reaching not like obviously the super bowl people know who he is tb12 and all the bullshit that comes with it is undoubtedly well known when i say reaching it's like reaching them at a point of sale like are they are they how much money do you think they're making like chris hemsworth app how much money could that be making how many people it's probably a lot okay it's probably a lot of turnover right but it's probably a lot I could imagine now their ad spend on getting this in front of people. Obviously, Brady, I think, gets a lot more organic traffic mm-hmm. because, you know, you're on the Super Bowl. The weekend's coming in, lost as fuck in that meet. What was that about? Can we, that was the worst Super Bowl halftime show of all time. <laughs> Not if, Anyways, but I think something like Chris Hemsworth's app, that's going to take a lot to get people on board with it. Because I would imagine that some people just look at it, have no idea who the fuck he is, and go, well, he's handsome. So I'm going to buy it. But it's like, what is the burn rate on getting people through the door? Yeah. I don't know that specifically. But to kind of speak to that other point is like you and I were so far in this rabbit hole, right? We we understand exercising the science behind it front to back, side to side, right? So many people, they just say, I like the way that guy looks. I want to look like him. I'm going to do his program. And there's literally no more thought into it than that. So I, but I, so here's my thing with Brady. It's like, does he got a rig? Like, does Brady have a good physique? I mean, I th- I'm going to clear my search history after this. And I'll tell you what I searched. <laughs> Go, Tom Brady Tom shirtless Brady shirt. pictures, dude. That's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> dude, he looks like a melted gummy bear. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> but he, no but again, way. yo, he, he's the one that's selling long longevity, right? He's not selling a six pack. <laughs> He's the, dude, he, he looks like a melted gummy bear. What is happening here? No, dude. This guy's not selling any. He's the before pitcher. He's selling the before pitcher. Look uh, at this pale ass Ned Flanders motherfucker. Get out of here. That is what peak performance looks like, Jordan. Are you joking me? What? No, dude. This guy doesn't have an ounce of testosterone in his body. What happened? Wife's a piece, though. Just saying that. Moving on. I don't think it's aesthetic, which is the crazy thing with Tom, and I think that's something that whatever he is as this omnipotent, fucking omnipresent, you know, drop an end bomb in the fucking in the in the alleyway out to the dressing room, he's beyond reproach. Like, and it's a weird ascension to see. Like, I would say him, 
Uh, who else? The Rock again? Mm-hmm. Like it's crazy to me <laughs> that Tom Brady sells training programs or whatever the fuck that is, and The Rock doesn't. Didn't people just starting? Eating like 15 pounds of cod per day because of the rock, dude. I feel like more people have gotten on the rock cheat meal bandwagon than have gotten on the rock 15 pounds of cod for an elliptical bandwagon. <laughs> All right, I feel like people just do what's expedient. Like, he also bought his mom an Escalade. I don't think many people are shelling out for their mom to get an Escalade. <laughs> people just see what they want to see, but it's just, I don't know. Brady has ascended to a weird point in as a pop icon like a popular culture icon where people there's no rationality in the way people think about him right like he's just uh he's a he's a he's, you know he's a brand he's like coca-cola right like you could come out with you know diet vanilla watermelon sprite or something and it's like you got enough market share that you're going to be able to fucking sell it and make it profitable because there is, there is no logic for what we just saw to sell anything related with health and fitness right and that's honestly kind of a a bad branding choice because look at look at Jordan, right? How much are people buying Jordan? I, I don't even know if these are Jordans. I'm they're assuming they're, not, they're Nikes. They're, they're Nikes. You know, these are these are the Nikes fucking and these Jordans are joints are though. Like these are come on. It's guys, it's the right? dunks, right? They're called the dunks. These are not dunks, man. No, these they're are, not dunks. They, but the Jordans are dunks, right? Oh, bro. Come, come is on. That a, is I'll tell you what they're not. They're not fucking Metcons is what they are. <laughs> I got a pair of Metcons He's now. already been Metcons. No, man. So you got like – you got ones. You got, you got, you got fours, fours. You got fives. The four you got retros. Nines. The wolf dude, grays. I got the off a sick pair of retros. I know the words. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> and, dude, I, and I'm very like new to the Jordan game but like the, when it comes to shoes. But Jordan as a, as a brand, dude, he figured out he where did. he fit in the cultural equation. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But I think – Brady didn't, but it also didn't matter. Now, I don't think Brady, by any by any stretch of the imagination, has the staying power. Like, Jordan's just sitting there smoking cigars, laughing at everyone, buying the same fucking shoes over again, right? right. I don't think Brady has that that shelf life as that's, a personal brand. That's exactly what I'm saying, is that it's, it's not the best way to position yourself, in my opinion, because who cares about foam rollers? People buy foam rollers and then never use them because right. no one cares about foam rollers. So if you're looking to position yourself in a brand that's going to become something that's you know a legacy like the Jordan brand, it's not foam rollers and body coaches. So here's the th- problem and I think Brady would have, even if Brady found a better product market fit to what he is, no one knows what he is. <laughs> Right? Like, he's the most elusive, recognizable person on the planet. Like, no one's pinning this guy down. There's no TMZ shit. Like, Jordan was in the public eye. Jordan did fucking Space Jam. Like, Jordan's opposite. Brady's not doing none of that. Yeah. Like, he's going home, and he's, like, playing with his kids and his hot wife, and he sits when he pees. And that's, like, Brady's <laughs> whole game is that's his whole jam. Other than that, we don't know much about him. But tell me I'm wrong. Like Maybe we, if he's gotten, like, the sunscreen market. Like high SPF, like 70 and above. Just, yeah, he's a walking before <laughs> picture for melanoma is what he is. Why is there so many beach photos of this soon-to-be lobster? I just, I don't know. It's, and obviously, like, he makes enough money playing sports, right? His contracts are probably far and above given the time that he's playing what Jordans were, right? Like, he's making, I don't know what he's making. He just signed another year contract extension with the box, so he's probably making a pretty penny. And his wife's pulling bank too. Like his wife makes more money than him. That's the ultimate power play. Like I know some dudes who aren't comfortable. Like if their old lady's doing real well, and like I know some guys who have like low key left their girls because they're just they're more powerful. And like just they make more money. And I'm like, dude, that's the ultimate flex because she has no reason to be with you. Like that Giselle has no reason to be with Brady. Like because you're not in it for the looks. You don't. You're clearly not in it for the looks. Right, he's got the weird veneers that are just, yeah, like, I don't dig, uh, anyways, but he's got the fucking weird dad bod, like, unless he's rocking a Pringles can, like, I don't, (laughs) right, like, that's the only reason, she's got hers, man, she's making her money, fuck, I just, I think that's the ultimate flex, but I think with the Brady-Jordan conversation, because obviously the conversations come up, even on the podcast, about, like, all right, goats, right, like, you know, it's one thing to try and go LeBron Jordan, then you end up in the inevitable rabbit hole if it's a different game, a different game now than it was back when Jordan was playing. Then people try and stretch it out past sports through generations. It's like, okay, greatest ever 
Jordan versus Brady, it's like, well, you can't do it within basketball. How could you do it across basketball or football? Yeah. But it's like with with legacy and with branding and with pop culture icon, like Jordan is forever. Yeah. Like jump man, forget the second you're a Drizzy Drake song, like you won. <laughs> I, I, Brady Brady's in some Drake lyrics. But there's not a song called Tom Brady, right? There's literally a song by Drake called Jump Man. Like, you have ascended into a level. So I just think, and again, it's not about money for them because it's just an object. But Brady is Brady's an enigma to me because his lack of social profile. To be that much, like, every fucking early February, the whole world's talking about Tom Brady, right? He's in the Super Bowl. He's going to make it happen. Yeah. But the second February third hits, or you know, after the parade, and he's throwing the thing and pissing everyone off, like he totally skated on all that stuff. There was a lot of like the Lombardi family was like pissed that he threw the the thing on the boat in Tampa to Gronk. It's like, dude, Lombardi, guess what? Guess who's had that trophy more than you? Him. It's his <laughs> fucking trophy now. It's a Tom Brady trophy. You can throw the Tom Brady trophy all the fuck he wants, but dude, you don't hear a word. He just goes away. Like, he's just everyone forget. And sports has adopted a 24 hour news cycle just like CNN has. You watch ESPN, it's a bunch of guys in terrible suits just talking about all these projections. Brady's just never in the conversation. He always, he's somehow been able to hack the system where he's, he is in the limelight for like the, maybe the last four weeks of the season. Like they were uncertain. Brady kind of took control of the team after like week 10, took him in. It was like, yo, we're going to do this wins. And then he fucks off. I, d I don't trust people who can uh, like manipulate the system like that. <laughs> Cause, dude, this, do you the, think the, it's that he's manipulating the system, or you think he doesn't want to fuck with it? He's, I mean, if he's forty three, dude, he's like, he's not necessarily in it for the fame and the limelight at that stage of his life, right? He's in it probably for the love of football, for the game, probably a little bit ego driven to retire as the best ever. I don't think it's his decision to make. In what way? In what way is he is the most prolific professional athlete on the planet and no one pays any attention to him. That's not – dude, media decides. And for some reason, media has decided to leave this guy alone. Like, Do you think no one thing... actually pays attention to him though? Because I know nothing about football. Right. I don't follow football, but I know Tom Brady. Sure. But it's you just know what he wants you to know. And there's a lot, of, there's a lot that we know about people that they don't want us to know. Like, where is that with Brady? Like, it's yeah. too clear. So you're saying it's going to be like a Tiger Woods story? I'm saying I, I want it to be. <laughs> no, I want it to be because it'll make him human. That would make, for me, that would make Brady more likable. If oh, there's just a video <laughs> of, like, his, I, what was Tiger Woods had? Like, his wife got the nine iron to the Escalade yep. and backed into a tree. Yep. Like, I would love for Giselle to come in out, whipping a tight spiral, putting it right through the back <laughs> of the Ferrari. Like, you know, who's, who's, who's fucking Coco? Because at least he's a human being now. Because he's, dude, Tom, Tom Brady's a simulation. <laughs> He's made by the government or something. Are we all a simulation though? Dude, no, but he's different. Like he's 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 deep state shit. Tom Brady is a construction of the deep state to keep Americans occupied. Like he's an ace in the hole. He's an agent provocateur just that hasn't been mobile. Like like mark my words, there'll be some crazy American shit that goes on and within the week that it happens, like we're like we America is going to invade some country and you're going to figure it. Then Tom Brady's going to have a huge scandal. Like they're, the, the deep state is hanging on to Brady. Like in case of emergency, <laughs> break glass. Giselle come in, start throwing stones, beat the shit out of him a little bit. Like we need a big distraction because we're over in fucking or stand country blowing some shit up. What? That fucking exclusive. You heard it here first. So it's the CIA protecting Brady's dark secrets and saving them as a protection mechanism. He's just an agent. Like there's just going to activate him into the so into the public light when there is a giant other world event that the US is fucking up on. It's a distraction. This it's a shell totally game. Totally legit. Dude, I swear I'm onto something. If I'm fucking right about this, yo, like if I'm right about this, I want a goddamn apology. <laughs> you got it, man. That would be you I got so it. So here's here's the thing. It, it's just good timing. It's like, have you ever met broads that get? I'm uh, sorry, I, I fuck. I said it. I don't care. Have you ever met women who got into horoscopes? 
Like, who try and tell you that you're a jackass because you were born in June? Like, no. what are you, a Sagittarius? Oh, I know your type. It's like, oh, yeah, all right. One of us is telling their true colors, and it's not me because I was born in June or whatever the fuck. That, to me, is like if you read a horoscope, they're so overgeneralized that they're guaranteed to be kind of sort of right. Tom Brady is a human being, I think. <laughs> He's going to make a mistake. I could not imagine the level of temptation that comes of being a Tom Brady. Right? Like you've won the world. You've won. If this is a game, you've won. You've ascended any sort of consequence. Like, you know, the, the, guy, the Saudi Arabian guys that are trillionaires and they just do like, I don't know, what do you want to do? Buy people? All right. Yeah, that sounds cool. Whatever. Like we're, not, we're too big to fail. So the inevitability is that Tom Brady will make a mistake or something will come out. So it's not me being premonitious. It's like, okay, nothing's just come out yet. He's not God. He is a human. He will fuck up because all humans fuck up. And then the U.S. is going to just pull some shit because the U.S. is always pulling some shit. And just these two events will coalesce eventually. The U.S. is nonstop pulling shit. Tom Brady is a human being that has to make a mistake. So I don't want to be premonitious, but I think at a certain point, those two things could superimpose. All right. I just think there's no way the guy's too clean. Like, have you ever been to Singapore? No, I have not. Singapore is so clean that you know someone is suffering. Like, you're walking through the park <laughs> and you're terrible. going like, yo, there's literally dog robots picking up trash. And then next thing you know, it's like, because if you spit gum out, they're going to hang you, right? That's how it works in Singapore. So it's so nice. It's like, this is like utopian, maybe dystopian nice. That's Brady. I see. I'm I telling see. you, man, the guy's got to be like a deep state agent. Like, yo, Brady, we're going to have, you're going to have to pull some shit. We're over in Iran fucking pulling nuclear weapons or something. Like, we need a distraction. And, dude, that would ruin people. The emotional investment that people have into Tom Brady, especially if you're some jackass from New England, right? Like, that is their god. That's like telling a five-year-old girl that the tooth fairy doesn't exist. <laughs> that, like, Tom Brady being anything other than this omnipotent, omnipresent, perfect human being. Like the white picket fence, cherry pie on the fucking windowsill, all American tomato soup guy. That would rock people. That whatever else is going on in the world, that will be the biggest story. So when it goes down, do his fans support? Oh, do people from New England? Yeah, like they his deny. fans. So they go Where? through the stages of grief, uh, right? They they deny it. They go through the whatever those five stages of grieving are. What do you think? The because God would be? is dead. That's what. It, that's what Band it'll be. Ban Brady, maybe. Hey. Ban Brady. Oh, I think that'll be a movement. <laughs> I think that'll be a big. I mean, it's not going to happen now, but watch. It is an inevitability that some dirt has to come up on this guy. Man. Right. Right now, it's like the the social machine hasn't decided that it it can or is rightfully uh, um, rightfully armed with the evidence needed to. But like, he's had a few blunders before. There's some people out there that. If he, they let M bomb slip, they'd be gone, right? Like we just pulled up that story of the guy in the NBA. It's like different racial slur, and he was on some Twitch stream thing rather than on ESPN on Thursday Night Football. But he got slapped with a fifty thousand dollar fine. There's going to be some tweet, and I've never heard of this guy, yeah. right? So it's like, it's almost like you know what it is. Remember when CrossFit was popping chicks in like the Dominican for running like D ball and trend, yeah. and they were in eighth place in some region that no one cared about. <laughs> It was just like, oh, we're really trying to clean up, you know, the, the behavior of CrossFit. It's like, hold on. If the girl in the like in Sao Paulo was running trend base before the event and she got eighth in the region that no one cared about, can we see what the fuck's going on over in Iceland? Because they're doing really good. <laughs> or whatever Toomey's doing down in Australia, like she's doing really good. Yeah. So it's almost like it's it's almost like uh they use some of these people like like social sacrifice. Like, yeah, buddy on the Twitch stream, Myers, whatever the fuck his name is. Should he have said it? No. Like, it's a dumb thing to say to go rage quit on a thing when you're a professional athlete. Is it acceptable of anyone of any job? Like, if you're an office manager at fucking Staples, you shouldn't be saying that shit. But it's it's a weird social outrage machine that I can read an article in fucking, you know, on, on Time's website about some point guard that, like, doesn't get any playing time. But everyone can see Brady, and the whole machine goes, nothing to see here, guys, but just wait. So do you think it's because he's in a position of power that nothing's come out about him? Like, you hear about that whole shit with, like, the royal family going on, how they were, like, 
oppressing the the I don't know their names. Uh, the son like married a half African American woman. She Meghan was, Markle. What from Suits? Meghan Markle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, not his head. He don't. Yeah, dude. So like they're talking about like it all came, all the dirt's like coming out now. Uh, Do you uh, think it's something where like his his legacy is so powerful they're able to cover it up? I think enough people in the right places have enough financial interest in Brady's success, given the his who endorses him. Yep. Like Tiger at a point was expendable when that shit went down, right? Like when that shit was Tiger wasn't at his peak, right? Tiger was having a rough couple of years with his back. You're probably slamming out Swedish hookers. Not the best thing for your back if you got a lot <laughs> from our professional perspective. Uh-huh. You shouldn't be doing that. So it was like, yeah, I don't know. We need a scapegoat. GM didn't need him. Cadillac didn't, or whatever the fuck. The Buick Enclave didn't need Tiger Woods anymore. So he's dispensable. Mm-hmm. Brady right now is indispensable. He's indispensable as an asset from a marketing perspective with with backings that has way too much money. And like, dude, the royal family, it's too big to it's too big to fail. Right, especially if you got Meghan Markle on the roster, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> just saying, absolute peace. But yeah, I don't know. I just it would make I would like I would respect Brady more as an athlete because it would make him a human being. Because right now he's just he's not a real person. Like he's like Tupac at Coachella. Like he might as well be this fucking hologram throwing hail marys. Like he's just not real. I'm gonna throw a scenario out there. Go. You might not like it. What if he's actually just fucking boring as dirt? Oh, like he's just like in bed by 7.30, like yeah. starches his fucking nightcap and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not a good story, man. It's not. I don't know. It's nowhere near as entertaining as everything else you just said. But I th- but I just, I don't know. <laughs> like there's too much. There's no one has beat this game, right? Fame undefeated. We're not meant to. Like, we're not meant to have. We go places and people know us. We're idiots, right? It's so strange. Like, I when I ever get, like, I get free admission into gyms. And I'm like, please just let me pay the $20 or whatever it is. Like, oh, no, I bought it on Instagram. Like, that's weird. This guy doesn't have to pay for literally anything. And people give him hundreds of millions of dollars. There's no way that you, this guy's not thinking, like, yeah, I could probably get away with it. <laughs> right it's 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 in the dna man we're wired to overreach and you're gonna tell me the guy with the most amount of access and reach and indemnification in the world isn't like i don't know what it could be but dude i swear to god when it comes out it's gonna be biblical <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i'm i'm not saying i disagree i i i think that that is a lot of times human nature is people will once they have approval especially from the masses they go to a dark place yeah. or not necessarily a dark place, but they push the limits. Right. Right. You hear the story like fucking R Kelly, like peeing on 13 year olds and shit. And like, <laughs> did you see that documentary on Michael Jackson? Uh, yeah. I couldn't sleep for like probably a solid three days after that. Oh, I never saw it. What was it go? Oh, <laughs> it's like, like the whole Macaulay Culkin shit. Like never. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's about like all the kids that like they interview, like a couple of the kids that he supposedly like sexually assaulted. Right. And it, it gets fucking weird and pr- pr- pretty explicit at some point. But, dude, this is what I'm saying, though. Like, there was a time where no one could have imagined that, like, the Thriller fucking right. album and was the most purchased album of all time. Yeah. And there's right? these people that, are, you know, this came out. They'll say he's dead. He can't tell his side of the story. Definitely true. Who the fuck knows if it's true or not. But there's this story out there probably for a reason. Right. Right, so it's probably not completely fabricated. Maybe it's not. I'm sure that you know. If I'm watching it on a documentary, they're trying to make it like you're saying. More if interesting. The smoke is fire. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. There's probably something going on. If people are saying something's going on, I would love to see a collection of people, like a list of because you only hear the bad stories, right? You only hear like the Jerry Sandusky, the fucking right. Bill Cosby shit. Right. But it's like. You hear those so – not often because obviously when you're dealing with people of that level of status, they're they're pretty rare. But I would love to see a list of like the most unimpeachable people who've reached a certain level of, of fame because, it, dude, I think that's a, a – again, it's a small list of people who reach that level of fame, period. 
but it's like they all seem to be human beings at the end of the day and that their proclivity for weirdness it seems to just be scaled by their ability to access more indulgent means of entertainment or whatever so do you like, think this is tied to what's his name jeffrey epstein Wait, hold on. Do I think Brady is somehow tied to the Epstein thing? I feel like I, we have to take it there. I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't know enough about that one. If I'm being honest, that was a weird. That gained too much popularity for me to give a shit. And yeah. I love Wayfair, so I think because the Wayfair thing got too low. Were, were they? Like, in, were they the well, same? Because Wayfair came together? out around the same time that people were like selling children, and then it was like deep state government. The the, the what was the what was the fucking chemical that they were trying to get out of the kids? Oh, you know what I mean? Fuck, dude. You guys like adrenal chrome or oh, yeah, something. Yeah, adrenal chrome or whatever. And it's like, dude, I, we we have a Wayfair professional account. That's how much furniture I fuck with. So I fuck with Wayfair. And I haven't bought a single like I haven't like, hey, I'm waiting for my chaise lounge to show up, but there's a little Portuguese kid here. I don't know. I think something got lost. But I I don't know enough about the Epstein thing, man, to like really go deep on that because oh he God. was what like a like a point of leverage. Right, he was he, used by like the idea was he was used by like some deep state organization to compromise individuals to get them to do what he want. Like, yo, let's let's get you out on an island, let's get you fucking slamming a few kids, and then now we have you compromise, we'll get you to do whatever you want. Is that kind of the go? I think that's the gist of it. Yeah. So do you think that that is plausible? <laughs> I think anything is plausible. Okay. I'll I'll start there. I think that the things that are really fucked up that are going on, that are absolutely going on, we're not going to find about, find right. out about. Like th these deep state, like uh, like Brady, <laughs> like Brady is like <laughs> who the fuck knows, <laughs> dude. I swear that we, the world is so crazy right now that if we we can all kind of sit back and what what little I heard about the the Epstein thing was like, all right. The whole this how he died alone was like this. This seems like the Clintons were involved, right? This <laughs> seems like this guy just got Qaddafi'd, right? In like the middle, like oh, I don't know, he didn't make it out of the prison cell. It's like yeah, okay, like, you know, he definitely killed himself in a way that doesn't seem plausible. It's almost like they 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 made it so like you could make it way more believable, but it's like they want to implant the doubt just so you know how powerful they are. Just so it's like it's like the OJ thing in a certain way. It's like everyone knows this guy did it, right? Like Ford had to cancel the Bronco for like twenty five years because <laughs> this guy definitely did it. Like, do you think Ford would have canceled that vehicle if he got off and everyone was like, "No, he was wrongfully accused." Absolutely not. <laughs> We got to pull this fucking thing from production. Why? Because you didn't see this video down 95? <laughs> well, obviously. So it's like, I don't know. The court of public opinion always sort of like reigns true in those situations. So I just, the Epstein thing is like, I think it's proof of concept that what I'm saying could be true. I'm saying Tom Brady is, is an, an agent of the deep state that is going to be activated as a distraction to something going like, hey, if you're at a water cooler and it's Brady fucking with a bruise faces, a bruise face, Chris Brown, Giselle, Rihanna situation, like he just goes 12 rounds bare knuckle on his wife and it's all makeup and none of it really happened. And there's some shit like we're fucking dropping a nuclear weapon somewhere. There's sarin gas in some middle of Iran. You're at a water cooler. What do you talk about? <laughs> What are you talking about? You talk about this because that's such a pearl. That's such a flashbang. I swear to God. And I don't want it to be true. I, I don't want the sarin gas. I don't know if I <laughs> yeah. All I right. don't want All the right. atrocities in the Middle East to be true. Right. But it's like I feel it in my bones, man. Like just that how things seem to coalesce. Like the way this happens, then this happens. It's so predictable. So do you think there's a link – between body coaching, TB12, and Scientology. Oh, bo body coaches are just, yeah, man. Body coaches are the, <laughs> what the sleeper cells. <laughs> what level do you have to pay until until you get eternal I guess, Yo, Steph was forgiveness. in Scientology, eh? We got to talk about it on the podcast with her tomorrow. Steph was raised in Scientology. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That'll be, yeah, that'll I'm be interested. one for tomorrow. Um, but leave your comments below because this is going to be on YouTube. This is RX Radio. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, whatever you decide to call it. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, full-length audio. 
Uh, check us out, Prescript.com. Leave your comments on whether or not you think Tom Brady is an agent of the deep state waiting to be activated to distract the world from mass atrocities performed by the U.S. government. I've this is going to no get banned idea. from YouTube. I have no idea what to think. Yeah, just because you implicated the Mind U.S. government. blown. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> we'll see you.